Yo, what's up guys? It's King Sean here, back with another video. And in today's video, I will be discussing four players the Washington Commanders could and should consider moving on from this offseason, whether that's cutting them or trading them. So, if you guys are new to my channel, leave a like down below, subscribe, turn notifications. I'm on the road to 3K subs. If you could hit that sub button, I'd really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. All right, so the first guy we're going to start with here is Logan Thomas. Now, Logan Thomas is a bit of an obvious one to me because uh, at this point, he's 32 years old. Injuries have really derailed him for the past two years. I mean, when we signed him back in 2020 to a two-year, about $6 million, he was good in, in his first year with us back in 2020. He had, I think, over like 60 receptions for close to 700 yards and like six to seven touchdowns, which is pretty freaking good. So he's, he was really good with us back in 2020. Um, he didn't have a bad start in 2021, but he did get injured against the Falcons. Um, and then he didn't play for a while. Then he came back against the Raiders, I think, week 11 or week 10. Or I think it was week 12, actually. Pretty sure it was week 12. But came back against the Raiders. He was playing good against the Raiders. And then Yannick Ngakwe went low towards his knee. That was a very, very dirty hit. Um, and he got injured again. And he tore his ACL and MCL. Luckily, he returned next season on time, 2022. But he just didn't look the same. I mean, let's read off his stats um, over the for his four years with us. Um, in 2020, he played in all 16 games. Uh, he had 72 receptions for 670 yards and six touchdowns. A really good season. 2021, where he was injured most of the season, he had six receptions. I mean, suppose sorry, he played in six games. He had 18 receptions, 196 yards, and three touchdowns. 2022. He played in 14 games, 39 receptions, 323 yards, and one touchdown. He hadn't fully recovered from his ACL and MCL tears, so that's why he didn't really produce much last year, well, as in 2022. And then this season, past season, 2023, he played in all 16 games, uh, 55 receptions, 496 yards, and four touchdowns. So he wasn't terrible um, this 2023 season. I mean, he had a lot of drop passes. He had some fumbles. I think he had a fumble against the Bears and one against the Eagles, I want to say, or against the Cardinals. I don't know. It was one of those games. Well, probably another game. Um, Excuse me, but he wasn't great. He wasn't terrible this last season, but he wasn't great either. Obviously, 2022-2021 injured seasons, and in 2020, he was really good. But we just need a young tight end who – we just need a young guy. Logan Thomas, he's 32 years old, getting up there in age. Obviously, he was a quarterback to start his career. Then he, um, you know, made the change to tight end. And I like Logan Thomas. I like Logan Thomas. But unfortunately, injuries have derailed him. And he's just getting up there in age. We need a young tight end who can be dynamic. Uh, we're going to target him in the red zone. We just need a guy like that. And Logan Thomas, unfortunately, he isn't that guy for us anymore. So Logan Thomas, he is my first guy who I think we should consider Cutting, I think we will cut him this offseason. I definitely think we will. And if we do cut him, we would save six million, six point five million dollars in cap space, over six point five million dollars in cap space. And it would be the same for pre June first cut and a post June first cut. So we already have around seventy five million dollars in cap space. So it's cutting Logan Thomas will put us over eighty million dollars. So Logan Thomas, I think we should definitely release him this offseason. And uh, that is my first player. I think we should consider cutting. On to the next. All right, so the next guy I think we should consider moving on from is Andrew Wiley. Andrew Wiley, he was horrible this past season. Let's, and he was horrible. If you just watch Commander's games, he, he was absolutely terrible, constantly getting beat like a drum. Sam Howell, he never had time to throw the ball. All right, and I, I feel like that's, where, that's one place where this organization failed him as a whole. Ron Rivera, Martin Mayhew, not you know, building this offensive line good enough in order to protect Sam Howell. Andrew Wiley this season, he uh, had a, he played on a 977 offensive snaps. He had four penalties called on him and allowed only nine. I honestly thought he allowed like 12 sacks or 13 sacks, but he only actually allowed nine, which is still pretty bad and is tied fourth most in the league, but he did only allow nine. Now, can't see all of his stats because PFF is behind a paywall, but his PFF grade this past season was a 69.2 overall grade, which for it should be way lower than that. A 69.2 overall grade. He was horrible. He was a little better towards the end of the season, like like from the Rams game. 
to the Cowboys game. But, like, for the majority of the season, Andrew Wiley was really, really bad. And it just it pisses me off because, I mean, we went from who? Brandon Sheriff. I'm sorry, not Brandon Sheriff. Morgan Moses as our right tackle back in 2020 to Andrew Wiley as our right tackle in 2023, which is horrible. The way Ron Rivera constructed this offensive line, the way he rebuilt this offensive line, Man, I'm I'm happy he's gone. I'm happy he's gone because the way he built that offensive line, rebuilt it, horrible, absolutely terrible. I mean, the only offensive lineman I would have staying is Sam Cosby, really, as our right guard. Sam Cosby, in my opinion, he was a top five guard this past season, well, top five right guard this past season, and you could argue he's a top five guard in the NFL right now, in my opinion. No, I think he is. You could definitely argue it, but Andrew Wiley, I don't got much to say about him. He was pretty bad. Uh, we paid him. I think his contract was like three years, $24 million. If we cut him, we will save, pre-June 1st, we will save one over $1.5 million. However, we would take up around $6 million and get dead cap. So I think we would much rather prefer to cut him post-June 1st, which we would save $6.7 million, over $6.7 million in cap space and only... Um, have a two million dollar dead cap charge so we should definitely uh cut andrew wiley we should definitely move on from him no question about that uh, no question about that sorry um now on to the next player all right so next guy on my list is charles leno and charles leno is i'm cut i'm considering cutting him mainly because of the amount of cap space we saved by cutting him i'm gonna just get right to it pre-june first cut if we were to cut him we'd save over $7.2 million in cap space. A post-June 1st cut would mean we would be uh, saving $11.7 million in cap space over that, actually. So if we were to cut J Charles Leno, we'd save a lot of money in cap space. Now, over these past two seasons, really, because in 2021, when we signed him back in 2021, he was pretty good back in 2021. Um, he was arguably our best offensive lineman. I like Sam Cosby back in 2021. I'm pretty sure he got injured, though. He injured his hand early, so he didn't play a full season. So Charles Leno, uh, and Charles Leno, he's very durable, okay? I will say that about him. He's very durable. He rarely gets injured, so that's one thing you can appreci appreciate about him. But his play over the past two seasons specifically haven't been the best. This season, he he was penalized 10 times and allowed three sacks. Three sacks isn't terrible, but how, however... Being penalized 10 times is pretty atrocious. Last year allowed um, eight sacks and was penalized, I think, four or five times. But penalized 10 times, that's pretty bad, I'm pretty sure. He got called on a couple holdings. Well, mainly false starts, actually. He got called on a lot of false starts. So that's mainly one problem with Charles Owen. And also, he's 31 years old. And he he's like like with um you know Logan Thomas. He's just getting up there in age. We signed him to a three-year, we extended them to a three-year $31 million contract after the 2021 season, which I like, but over the past two years, he just, um, you know, haven't, hasn't been really great, and it does suck because Charles Leno, he was pretty solid with the Bears. He was very reliable. Like I said, he never got injured. He rarely got injured, so, you know, he was good for us in 2021. He just fell off. Our entire offensive line really fell off these past two seasons. In 2021, it, it was elite. I'd say it was elite with Sam Cosme, Leno, Roulier, um, um, sorry, I'm trying to remember. Oh, Eric Flowers. So, <clears throat> our offensive line in 2021 was good, but, you know, with the changes Ron Rivera made in 2022 and this year, it's just been bad. And really, the most important thing about O-line play is the communication. All right? If the communication, if you have, like, say, like, not elite offensive linemen, but they have great communication within each other, um, with each other, um, then you can get a pretty good offensive line out of that. If not, then your offensive line, it's going to suck. I'm not going to lie. It's going to suck. And that's, I think that's the main reason as to why our offensive line hasn't been great these past couple of years. So that's just my take. But Charles Leno Jr., I think we should move on from him this offseason, um, mainly because of the amount of cap space we saved. All right. Now, on to the last guy, and this last guy is a trade candidate. Y'all probably already guessed who it is already, but if you didn't, it's Jonathan Allen 
we could, and I actually do think we will trade Jonathan Allen this offseason. And here's why. If you if y'all um didn't know, he actually went out to the junkies radio. I'm pretty sure it was after the Giants game, our second um battle against the Giants week eleven. After that loss, he went on to the junkies radio the next day, basically saying that he has um thought about, you know, leaving the commanders one off season. He has thought about it because of all the losing and I don't blame him. We've I mean, we've every season he has never experienced a winning season here in D.C. So I get it. I definitely do get it. So that is one reason as to why we could dr- trade Jonathan Allen. Number two is being he's 29 years old. Um, obviously, he wants to go to well somewhere where he wants to win. And he said he does not want to be a part of an, another rebuild. Well, he'd prefer not to be a part of another rebuild. So uh, that's one thing. Uh, as to why, you know, we could potentially decide to trade Jonathan Allen and Josh Harris, Adam Peters might be like, you know what, we'll give you what you want and we'll trade you to another team. Maybe the Bears, maybe a team like the Packers. I did heard some, hear some rumors about that, that the Packers may be interested in Jonathan Allen. Uh, but yeah, we could, we could trade Jonathan Allen this offseason. Now, what could we get for Jonathan Allen? I might make a separate video about that in the near future about what we could get for him. But my early predictions are a late second. Well, not a late second, a second rounder. A, a definitely a day two pick. Maybe like a second and a third rounder, a second and a conditional third. We could get a late first, but I really doubt it. I do feel like we will get multiple day two picks and possibly multiple day three picks as well. Or we could package Jonathan Allen up and trade him for the number one overall pick if we really wanted to. But John Allen this past season... He was pretty disappointing as well as Deron Payne, but his stats read off like this. He played in 16 games. Uh, he had 50 total tackles, 5.5 sacks, 1 pass deflection. His PFF grade this past season was 59.7, which, is, which isn't which is great, which is pretty bad, to be honest. It's not great. But, you know, part of his disappointing play this past season was because of the injury he suffered um, before the season started in the preseason, that planter. So and that that lingers, plant it it lingers. So it could have affected him for sure, but he was just overall very disappointing this season. And he was really good. And I don't like the narrative where oh, ever since he signed his contract, he hasn't been great. He signed his contract before the twenty twenty one season. He had his best season of his career in twenty twenty one, and he was really good in twenty twenty two. He made back to back um, Pro Bowls twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. So I don't really like that narrative right there about. Ever since he signed his contract, he hasn't been good. It's only been this past season. So, um, yeah, but I do think we will trade Jonathan Allen. And if we do trade him, a pre-June 1st trade or release would be, we will be saving not over $9.4 million. And a post-June 1st trade or release, we will be saving f- over $15.4 million. So, um, that are those are all the guys I think we should consider moving on from. And I think we will be considering moving on from this off season. So, if you guys, um, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'm on the road to 3K subs. If you could hit that sub button, I'd really appreciate it. And other than that, it's been King Sean, and I'm out. Peace.